every time when I come here, I will copy my file into the D drive. When I'm done, I copy from D drive to my external drive. I always do that. And that will eliminate like problem like saving, reading, writing. Because every time when you write, like when you save, um, it needs a lot of virtual memory to write temporary file instruction and then put another writing on the catch. I mean, like a hard drive catch, and then um, excuse the command. So when you work on thumb drive, thumb drive doesn't have catch at all. So it has to use virtual memory of the computer. Plus, if there's no space of the patching, it's called patching file, to write a temporary command. That probably it. Crash. Um, yeah. What is the due date? Uh, this project, let's see. Because originally it was supposed to be Thursday, but I know that we cut one Is project out. No, that was, that was before we cut one project out. That was just like what the syllabus said. Oh, oh, so this has to be the due date of the final one, the uh, the robot. Oh, no, the armor. Okay. So, so that, that, w that would be. Let me see if I. Because the project three was deleted from the D2L. Right. Oh, <laughs> all day November, that's right. Okay, I forgot to remove that. So this should be skip on project three. Okay. P3 dues November 13, let me remove this. I think I still have submission on it. That's why it show up here, hold on. So people who are online, did you get it? What we were talking about? Let me go to where is my content? Content term project submission. Okay. So I'm gonna remove project two research. Oh wait. Did we we didn't do research did we? We might add on project two. Oh yes, that's right. Okay, let me change will become project three. So that's research. So now, when I go back to, let me refresh that. So I'm going to remove the delete topic, revision. Thank you for reminding me this. I forgot. So the research will go away. Okay, so the critique will be November 19, not 5 p.m., of course, 2 p.m. <laughs> Let me change that. And are we doing anything after class goes online? Yes. Okay. Um, you could submit the revision, but your project is too sanding your project one and coloring. Okay. That's what you are. That's why I give out the uh, the hand tool that you need. So, and um, I will do a video or a page during that week to show you how 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 can you to help you how to work up with it. That's it. Okay. So that visible critique rendering and. Let me check again. So critique rendering on November, and then revision on December 3rd. Now the project one 3D print object December 10th. So um, you won't be back in on campus, so you will have to take a good photograph and submit it on this section. And, um, and I will uh, create a sample of how I want you to submit for the photograph because I need to see the detail when you sand it, you color it. And color, just sing, single color, just use the spray that I give it to you. Okay. If we stay on campus, will you still be able to like, discuss the spray comment or anything? Uh, 
I have, um, we, we need to wait, um, Marty will be the one who make decision okay. because it depends on the university. I don't know. Okay, because I know I'll, mm -hmm. I'll be here. You'll be here, okay. You know, that I don't know. Okay. Yeah, because of um, university chains, sometimes they said yes, and then later on something come up, they said no. So you have to wait until like two or two that week. Okay. Marty will send out like the, all the information. I will share. Okay, guys, so now let's take a look at a. So now the. SI November revision. Oh, why there's still project to to the pin file? I already deleted. One moment. Sorry guys, hold on. Let me pause the video. I have touched up my work a little bit. Let me load up my configuration. Load. <coughs> I already copied my file to D drive. And go. Let me change my document side a little bit. I don't like to have that. Okay. And I'm going to load to that I did. So um, let me show you this one. So this one I make a little up until n chance to. So now when you do a um, close, you should do when you repost your geometry. So I can talk a little bit about how to post this. Now when you pose, make sure you pose it based on your reference. And I have my, and um, I can show you. And um, basically my idea is uh, based on this singer. And I think I'm going to use this pose of her, how her hand, her jacket, and cloth. And then <sighs> now. She stands so straight leg. I'm gonna redesign the leg so that I can see uh, the silhouette better. Now, um, even though I picked the uh, reference that her pen is so wide, so this gonna be a little hard for um, to get a good silhouette. So I have to redesign her pen. So that's an idea. Okay. So now, for today though. I am not going to work on the inside, uh, uh, her, her dress yet. I wanted to work on the uh, jacket so that I can show you a few tools that need to be used. Now, how can you pose this? It's really simple, actually. Like, for example, when I look at her, her neck will turn. And once again, I'm going to use the uh, project one here, drop it in here later. So and I'll show you how to do that. Um, so at the moment, I'm going to just form her neck turn. Now when you do, um, when you form the figure, when you pose it, um, even though you look at on the reference, you need to act out also so that you can feel that which, like for example, based on her head turn, her neck doesn't really turn much at all because it can't really turn it. Because the uh, clavicle spine or the neck joints, it has seven of them. And it's bent, it's kind of twist from the base of the head. On the neck itself, it doesn't really turn at all. It just twists. Twists a little bit. So now, what I can do is, I can turn the head first. So. I'm going to control click to mask everything. And then when I hold control key, right now is pin, uh, is mask pin. What it does is, let me change the brush side. If I hold control key with all, I can subtract by painting it. Okay. Now, if I go to side view, 
I could try to do this and go control key, change to la mask lasso. And now I can add control and then I can drag. Here we go. So let's take a look at under mask menu palette here. View mask, you can turn on and off, you shouldn't. Inverts, you can inverse it. Now inverse, if you hold control key and click the outside, you can invert it from here. So that's mask. Now, if I rotate it right now, I'm gonna hold control key, or if you unlock these locks, uh, unlock uh, this lock button, all keys unlock. I'm gonna center to the unmask. There you go. I'm gonna reset the orientation. Now, when I go to side view, I could move, change the pivot point. I'm gonna change it right around there, maybe. Hold on, let me think. It's actually, the rotation is right back here. So let's do that. Now, if I rotate it right now, oop, I have to lock now. If I rotate it right now, it look like this. So we need to smooth out at some point. So I'm gonna undo. And I'm going to switch to draw mode. So now on draw mode, I can hold control key to blur this mask by clicking on the masking area. Can you see it's blurred? Now, let me undo. I want to show you where the command is. Right here, mask all, control A, you can use that too. And clear mask. To click. Now, if I do mask all, it looks like this. I'm going to undo. I can do control A on your keyboard. I'm going to undo control C. So now, to inverse, you hold control click and inverse. Now, to clear, you control drag. If you don't want to use that button, I'm going to undo command Z. So now, blur mask. You can blur it. Can you see when you click blur? Blur the between unmask and mask. Soften the transition. Now, I'm gonna undo again. You can do a glow, uh, grow mask button by here. You can grow it. So it's basically, it's create a radius. Soften. Now, what if you wanted to grow and make the line sharp? You need to add Sharpen mask, can you see? So you grow, or grow one first, sharpen, or grow a few times and then sharpen. So, oh, sorry, I click blur. <laughs> I shouldn't have wear a glasses. When grow mask, grow, sharpen, grow, sharpen. Can you see it's keep going up? Now you can also do shrink, 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 shrink. When you shrink, it creates a radius blending also, so it's similar to the blur, but step backward. Shrink it in and blur. If you want to shrink and be sharp line, you just add sharpen mask. Shrink, sharpen, here we go. I can grow again, and then I'm gonna blur more. Here we go. Now when you blur more, it's blend in, inward too. So now I'm gonna start it to make a turn, head turn, rotate, and I'm gonna turn the head. Now the things with this is, uh, when you rotate, it's always not perfect. So you may have to do move at the same time. Here we go. And I'm gonna blur a little more. I'm gonna shrink, blur, Sharp, shrink it more. Sharp, shrink it more. And I'm gonna add blur. So see if I can shift. Can you see? I wanted to shift a little bit. I can turn a little more. It's always not perfect. Now my problem is if you work 
on the face that has detail. I lose it because I didn't pay attention. Can you see that? So I'm going to undo, go back. There we go. I'm going to have to unmask the head right here. Because when you think about it, when you turn, it's going to create a crease the inside, the, the side that you turn. So I'm going to switch to draw, and I'm going to hold control key, switch my brush to pen, ma uh, mask pen. Going to change my brush size, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tap space bar so that I can change focal shift to be a little harder, less far, uh, less far off. Control key with Alt to subtract. So basically, I'm going to subtract. I don't want anything to move on right here. So, and I can add, just control, can you see? I'm going to add a little less. Let me, let me change the uh, intensity of RGB to be a little lower. Here we go. Not not hundred percent, so that I can kind of play a little bit with a little subtle. So now, when you hold Control key again, turn this back to one hundred. Otherwise, you're gonna forget, and then you will like, hey, why I can't paint it? So now, rotate again. Here we go. Can you see it now? I get the creasing. Okay. So, and I may have to move little bit okay so we're gonna have to fix the rest of this section so we're gonna go back to Q and unmask all or you can click clear soften as need okay. and then we're gonna have to rotate the neck right now we rotate only the head okay. then I'm gonna inflate this back that's too much. I am using a uh, mouse, so I have to do more step than you guys if you're using a pen. Okay. So I'm going to have to move this side of the neck a little bit right here. It's not natural. Right there. Oops. There we go. So now I could see that if I turn my neck, it should create a little angle right here, because it's the uh, the like I said, the cervical spine are kind of curved, like a really cur soft curve. So when you turn, it's create a little kind of an angle. So right now I don't have much angle at all because the neck doesn't really turn with that. So now. I'm going to mask again and hold control key and then I'm going to change my mask lasso to uh, up mask, sorry, mask pen to mask lasso. Control and add alt to unmask. So basically this time we want it to go to the neck. So if you pen too much, uh, if you unmask too much, using pin mask to unmask some area okay let me do this a little more here we go so now i'm gonna switch to mask pen and i'm gonna do soft pen here we go let's soften a little bit i'm gonna change the uh, intensity of rgb mode right here when you hold control key Actually, it doesn't really work. Never mind. And then I'm going to soften it a little bit by control click. There we go. This might be too much. I don't know yet. I'm going to try. So change the pivot point. I'm going to Alt key and grab the pivot point will be on the base of the neck. So you have to figure it out. I think it will be right on uh, toward to the back side. You could change the orientation also so that it will turn like real head turn. Can you see I changed the angle of the base? 
So now when I rotate it, I rotate like this. There you go. And when it's turned, the tapisia is kind of stretched a little bit. You can show off a little bit by angle it down. And I'm going to look at my reference at the same time. There we go. OK. Actually, she compensated by bending, uh, kind of bending her, her, her head a little upward. Actually, based on my picture, she actually moving her neck backward like this a little bit. OK, that's it. And now I'm going to go back to draw, and I'm going to unmask, start it to soften and fix the area that looks kind of deformed or look up awkward. I think it's, uh, the position is incorrect. Let me control, change her position a little bit. I just hold control. I switch between mask up uh, mask pin and mask lasso because sometimes it's easier to use multiple and now on the head I'm gonna unmask with mask lasso there go. and I think I'm gonna move her neck that's a little bit. Here we go. Okay. Unmask, and then I'm going to soften things. And I'm not worried a detail about anatomy at all, because on the body, the only thing we'll show is a, a little bit upper above the chest, like between clavicle and lower. So the rest of them will cover by clothes. So don't build anything. Don't need to. Let me uh, get the neck a little bit. I don't know. And tapesia has to go up a little higher show the form that has been deformed. This one stretch. This is stretch. I did it too much on that part. Okay. okay. I I'm gonna stop, otherwise it's gonna be too much. Now her torso a little turn, so I'm going to mask, and I'm going to unmask using lasso to unmask on the bottom. And this is going to have to be blur a lot. And um, when, when you look at on the upper torso, the most rotation is right on close to the bottom of the um, uh, the the um, this area, I forgot the word right here. So that's the most turn. In between the app doesn't really turn much at all because of the joint itself, uh, because of the spine that lock it. It's slightly twist, but not much. The big turn is right right here at this point. And then you might think. What about when I turn like this? You use your hip to help. So hip can turn more, but not on the abdominal. So I'm going to have to solve this a lot. I'm going to do blur using a masking menu. So blur, and I'm going to shrink and add blur, shrink more and add blur. When you shrink without sharpen, basically you kind of lighten, reducing, but has a softness into it, softness into it. 
So now I'm going to switch to R and Alt. Hold Alt key. We don't have to unlock the lock icon anymore. Just Alt key. Click on the uh, reset orientation. And then I'm going to move right around here, the center, and start it to turn just a bit. So now I could feel that I can have her app twist a little more uh, until right above the uh, belly button. So I'm going to undo, switch to Q. I'm going to try to shrink my mask more and more. Shrink. Sometimes it's really hard to see. Just make a guess and blur it until you see kind of lighter color. I probably have to go more. Shrink, shrink, shrink. Blur. Test. Rotate. See if it works. Here we go. My twist started to twist from right here too. I think that's good. Now I'm going to shrink more. I'm going to stay on that tool. I can sharpen it so that I can see it and then shrink. And then s blur. Let's twist again. Nope, that's too far on, that's too much on there. I want it lower. So I'm gonna shrink, sharpen, shrink, sharpen, shrink. I think it's too slow. I'm gonna just manually unmask a little lower, right there. But then, now I'm gonna, so this has become like a hip turn now. That's okay. I think it's good. Oops. Blur, shrink. The turn should be a little soft between the belly button. Turn on rotate. Change the pivot point as it's already on the pivot. Here we go. Just a little bit. I can do, I'm going to exaggerate a little more, here we go. Okay. Pretend that I like it. Actually, it, it needs to touch up more. Okay, so I'm going to work on arm. Now arm, you cannot do symmetrical because mine is not symmetrical. So I'm going to mask everything and then unmask right around the shoulder because the shoulder will be ro will be uh, rotating on the shoulder so the shoulder oops it should be right here like this blur it and i'm gonna use grow to grow out a little bit so that it has a little more blending when i turn now switch to rotate to Q, uh, R, and I'm gonna reset the location, uh, reset the orientation, Alt, and click that orientation. I keep holding Alt, I'm gonna move there. Now, the rotation, it should be right around here, because that's what the upper bone is. So basically we change the pivot point to wherever the joint sitting on. So I have to look. I can change the orientation a little bit. Because the clavicle come here and sit on top of the uh, upper bone, upper arm bone, and on top of the, um, the shoulder blade. So now I'm gonna rotate it. There we go. Now, when it get too much like this, oops. So it means it's time to stop. You don't go that high. You go a little bit. You go, take a look. And she actually rotate her arm forward. Now, it's time to go back to locking some other area. This is too much turn. Hold on, let me go back to move. I think because of you need to act as a clavicle help to, 
to rotate the arm forward to the body. So I'm going to just move instead. Here we go. And rotate a little more. Because the clavicle are pushing. Now, it's bent too much on this section. But it's creased too much. So I'm going to pull it out a little bit. Here we go. And then I'm going to have to touch up that area. So go back to draw. Unmask. Soften it. And right here, um, if you look at on the anatomy, basically the pectoral muscles are pulling this in. Because clavicle, uh, oh, that's too much, hold on. Right there. Okay. So it need, you need to show that there's a muscle on the chest. It's called pectoral muscle. It helps to pull the uh, attach of the um, shoulder in. It's actually tucked in under the deltoid. Deltoid is actually covered up like this. Okay, so let me put the landmark so that I know that is pectoral muscle is on top of the. Oh, not deltoid muscles on top of the pectoral. I'm not gonna get a little distinguished uh, uh, landmark right here. Okay, so now I still need to make her arm um, go higher. So right now I'm gonna mask. And unmask, this time has to be right here. Okay. And let me go even out a little more. Okay. Blood. Rotate it. Here we go. So basically, I try to maintain the form of the deltoid muscle. Here we go. Okay. So now, I think I'm okay with that part. Now, I'm going to change the hand, uh, the forearm. So I mask everything and unmask right around there. I do a little quick when you do on your own. Just take your time. Don't rush. Take your time and get the initial rotation and then mask again, unmask again. It depends on the situation. There we go. And sometimes when you rotate, it stretch the length of the forearm. And if it's longer than the head, you shrink it down by moving it. So, like for example, if I feel like this is so long, don't scale. If you scale, you're going to scale the hand shape. So use move instead. See? Move to shrink it in. Here we go. So. Let me undo quick. I'm going to, oops, no. I want that. There we go. I just wanted to, oh, hold on. I need to be masked. I want to move that up. There we go. And to do the finger is the same thing. So let's pretend that this is what I like. It's not, of course, but just pretend. Let's soften it. So now, how can we do the clothes? Let me save this. Control Shift T. I'm going to call Fly. There we go. Okay. So now we can extract the shape of your body surface into a different geometry. So that's why we built the uh, the body first because we I was planning we were planning that I mean you did not but I do so planning that we're gonna extract the form from the shape but beneath it. So 
right now, this is what we can do. Um, when we create extract, we're masking the area we want to extract, and then it my uh, ZBrush will create into a new subtool. So to do that, I'm gonna use brush, and I'm gonna paint. So I'm looking at her jacket, even though later on I'm gonna form the jacket to look like this. But to make things easier, we're gonna paint the the uh, mask that looks like both left and right are uh, over her shoulder. So control key. Make sure you change to pin mask, a mask pin. So basically you pin. You can use combination, like for example, I can do combination on right here. Because I want it a little more straight line. There you go. Coming actually is really long right here. Okay. So same thing as this hand. How about that? Now I'm going to change to pin mask. Started to pin. And I'm going to have the shirt open, not connect. Because later on, we can build a uh, zipper. It's open jacket based on my reference anyway. I mean, like on the body, you can switch to lasso. I think I paint on the front side also. Let's do that quick. It's quicker than just try to. Okay, and then I can subtract. Okay. Now, the font, let me close that. I think that's too long. Okay, so now, how can I open this section? Well, I'm going to switch to pen, pen, mask pen, and I hold control key and then just take it out. So, and um, for the call art, we will do it manually with another tool. So let me pen more. Okay, let's pretend I like it. So now, under sub 2, you have extract. And smooth will help to smooth out the edges. Because sometimes you might paint kind of a wickering. And um, if you don't turn on smooth, you will get a little jacket shape. So I will do 10. Now double side, you just keep it there. Everything else as is, except thickness. We're going to convert it to Dynamash, so we really need a thickness, even though it's going to look so unreal about how much the clothes are so thick. But we have to have the thickness. Luckily, on my reference, they're kind of thick clothes, so it's good. So now we can test. Right now, it's 0 0.01, uh, 0 0.02. I turn on Extract to see the preview. This is just a preview. And it's quite thick. If I started to rotate, go back. Let me see again. There you go. It's quite thick. And it actually, it's reasonable on my, on your, you might want to try like 0 0.01 and then extract. I mean, in your case, 0 0.01 might be acceptable. And um, if you feel like it's too thick, you just later on, you just kind of move brush to move it inward so that is penetrated to the body a little more. So in my case, I will do 0.25. Oh, doesn't matter. Here we go. So a little thicker. So if I like it, it's actually really thick, like her shirt. You click accept. Now after it's accept, can you see it's come back right here? Number two. So now I can, uh, um, unmask. So now I'm going to convert these to uh, data mask 
if you are not converting, it's, um, it's okay, but you're going to have a less geometry, that's all. So I'm going to check my DynaMesh. Let's save this as, I'm going to save to B, A, B. Here we go, just in case. So now, let me check. And I'm going to go to Geometry, DynaMesh. I'm going to enable, let's say, 600. 600 might be too much for now. Let's do 400. Because we, I just want, uh, I remove blur. I just want a uh, basic form first. I'm not going in detail. So now, it's helped me to get a, a little smooth quickly. And um, this section, if you want it to be, if I want to be thinner, I can do pinch. And then pinch it closer. You might have to be careful about the, uh, the brush size. Might have to be small. enough to make them closer. I'm looking at on my reference. Okay. And at this moment, I'm going to grab the, uh, let me spread apart the, uh, the, 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 uh, the neck here. Now, if it hard for you, you can mask them. Just mask the area that you don't want it to touch. Now, when you move, even though the brush are a little bigger, it will not affect that section. Okay. I think my brush is too big. Got to take my time. Okay. And then, there we go. And if this is too smooth, I can sharpen it. And then I'm going to use Trim Dynamics to flatten just only that area. Here we go. Okay, so now, what about making a color? So to do that, this time I'm going to show you some other two. Let's turn this jacket off temporary and go back and do here. I'm going to show you how to use topology brush. Topology brushes allow you to create a topology manually by drawing it. So if you look at on the brush, and I'm going to press T to isolate. Now topology brush, this is what it does. The brush size should be small. Now the brush size has something to do with the thickness. If you do a larger brush size, when you execute it, it's going to be really thick. So depends on how thick you want. In this case, my I'm going to go with a little thicker because I can thin them out. So this is how it do. Okay, how this is how it wor work. When you click and drag, you create a curved line. Now you can move the curved line by zooming in close to the end point, and then you can connect. So, uh, sorry, you can't really move, but you can simplify them later. Now, you can add, or you can delete it by hold control key, or you just click and drag. Oop, sorry, hold control key. Can you see you can cut them? You can remove them. There we go. I remove all. Do it again. So now when I do like this, I'm not good right yet. So now when it started to draw a line like this, can you see it started to get a highlight? So ZBrush allow you to draw only quad. Only quad. And gone is unacceptable. Now what if I change my mind? I can hold control or uh, Alt key and subtract. Nope. Now, accidentally click execute by clicking outside. Um, this is what you get. The thickness is based on your geom uh, based on your brush. I'm gonna undo. I'm gonna undo all. I'm gonna start it to draw a little nicer. 
I wanted the uh, I want the shape to help me to get started to do a call art. So now I'm gonna start it from here a little longer to the base because we're gonna immerse them on the jacket. Last time I show you another way how to do it. This is another way. Okay. So now I can start it to draw the line overlap. Stop it there. Now I'm gonna get started. I move my cursor over the uh, the stop line. So that helped me to continue. Now sometimes you may draw missing the line. It will not show highlight. Basically you just control Alt, uh, Alt key to subtract some of the area or delete the line and redraw it again. Right now I'm really careful about it. That's why I got it. Let's pretend I do like this. I'm gonna oh still work on my <laughs> I'm just lucky. Okay. So now I'm gonna change my brush size a little smaller. Let me go to one so there's no thickness. Oop. Undo. Okay, so now I can hold Alt key and just drag outside. Here we go. To remove all of those lines. And let's see. Okay. Come on. Oh. I think this is good. Now I click outside to execute it. And now there's in the same, sh I think I have too low subdivision. Let me undo, let me add more. It doesn't bend, follow the body. So let me add more, here we go. Now can you see, it started to disconnect. Let me control drag to delete and draw a little nicer. Control, trim, trim. No. Let me zoom in. Now, if I get this problem, I'm gonna have to delete some of the line. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Go. Let me delete that back. Let me get started from here and comment. Here we go. Oh, oh sorry. That's it. No. I might have to take this out. Can't. Here we go. Hmm. Let me remove that. Let me undo quick. I want to keep this line back. Get that. It's not perfect, but here we go. Control. Oh, uh, still. What's going on with this line? Okay. Okay. It takes a little bit of time. This section I'm going to let go because on the bottom I can blend them. So now. I'm going to click, get that, and I'm going to split this apart. So, I mean, 
the reason that I use topology brush because I want to use a Z modeler to extrude the column. So now I'm gonna go to a geometry. Uh, oh, sorry, sub two under split split two parts. Click OK. So now you got another sub two. Okay. If I turn transparency, you will see it. And on this sub two, I am not going to turn to Dynamash yet. I'm gonna move it. Let me turn on wireframe on share. Using move topology brush, I'm going to start it to form the shape. Right now, I use, uh, when, when I do clicking outside, I change the brush size to one. So it means no thickness at all. Because I want to extrude them later. So that when we do extrude, uh, no, we're going to create the thickness later. But when we wanted to extrude to extend the surface, this way is, is out. I'm missing this part. Oh, it's okay, I can connect them. So, now, you may not miss like mine. I think it's good so that I can show you. Now, I will come back and talk about the uh, Z modeler tool in depth later on. Not today. Today we're gonna just get started. Okay. So now I think see if it look like a here we go. Okay. All right. So now how can I connect this? I can remove that. If I turn on Z modeler. So press Z, Z modeler, and I can, oops, sorry. If I hold space bar, Q mass, can you see, I can delete. So if I turn on delete, I click, it's removing it, okay. So now I can um, split more. So if I move my cursor on S, hold space bar, I'm going to choose insert, single edge loop, and then when I click on the edge, it's at edge loop. Let me undo. I want it to look really close. The reason is because I'm going to change to move topology brush, and I'm going to move this out. There you go. There's only that area. Because I make a mistake. And um, if you pass the... Um, introduction for Maya software, the how to use the uh, Z modeler, it's so similar to Maya too. So now, I want to see the, uh, the back face because it's so hard to identify when in a certain angle. So under display property, turn on double, here we go, so that I can see it. So now I'm gonna continue to move this away okay now if you have thickness you still okay it, the, the only thing is you have to move both outside and inside surface so now I'm gonna extrude this section a little more extend so now to extend extrude is a little more um, unlike Z Maya that you can select particular section and extrude only there. Now because of the edge, I'm looping around. I'm gonna use a cutting instead. So I move my cursor right here because if you remember, I still under insert edge loop, single loop. Here we go. I want that one more loop there. Now I'm gonna use move to move topology. I'm gonna flare this out because this is a part of the uh, top part of the collar. So if it's hard to see, you might need to changing angle, zoom in, brush size a little smaller, so that it's grab only that point. There you go. Like that.
Okay. Gonna move a little more. Now my brush size can be bigger now. So easy to Okay, pretend that I like this. I just try to shorten my lecture. <laughs> okay. Now, if you want a little kind of a little curve inside, you can do bevel. So I'm gonna go to Z modeler, move the cursor only on over the edge, hold space bar, and I'm gonna do bevel and it's loop complete. So that is loop around like this. Can you see? I just wanted to blend, blend it off a little bit more. I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and extrude the whole thing. To extrude the whole thing, you move your cursor. Um, in Maya software, you have to right click on the surface and choose vertex is and face. On Z modeler, you move your cursor over on the particular component. A component and hold spacebar, you will get to that menu on the surface or on the edge or on the vertex. So now I'm going to extrude the whole thing to get the thickness before I convert to Dynamash. So move my cursor, go to spacebar. I'm going to just turn on QMass because QMass is the quick way. And now what I need to do is though. I need to change QMass, not single, or polygon. And now when I click and extrude, can you see? I want it to have a little thick thickness. And now we're done. So I'm going to switch to move brush. I'm going to bring back my shirt because I'm going to combine to the jacket, sorry. Turn that off, turn transparency. So now, I got to scale this a little more. So turn on scale 2, just move to, I am on the right one, okay. Zoom out a little bit, Alt, and click reset to the unmasked center. And I'm going to scale it out a little bit. Now it's a little bit. That's good. Let me move. There we go. Okay. I think this is good because even though it's bigger, after I combine them, I can do a lot of things. So let me make a little adjustment. Turn on. Here we go. So that I can see. I'm going to use a move topology. Move that. You might need. I might need to turn on a transparency again because I can't see. I just want to realign this section so that I don't have to touch up too much when I blend it together. Okay, mm, this part, let me grab both, and that can be, that's the, the inside, you don't have to worry so much because nobody going to see it, and later on you're going to uh, merge them into, into the body anyway. Because this is for modeling for a illustration, not for animation. Okay, that's it. Let's pretend I like it. So now, I'm going to convert this to Dynamash. So, turn it on. Geo Let's save this first. I'm going to save into B. Why I have B1? Let's do C then. C. And then I'm going to save to A, B, C, D. So the C one, my color is still maintained in the uh, low polygon. And 
on the D1 will be Dynamash. So turn on Dynamash. This time I'm going to do 400. Don't do too much here. 250 might be enough. Oh no, 250 is not enough, <laughs> sorry. So let's do 800. Okay, 800 would be the best. I'm gonna turn off, soften first, so smooth. And I kind of gonna avoid the edge. And a little thick is okay. We can thin them later. Maybe I'm going to just soften it. Oops, sorry, not move soft. Okay. So let's move to this section. Oh, no. Let's trim dynamics. Right there. I do it too quick. So when you do on your own, take a little time to to mod, to molding it. Okay, L let me do it quick, and so that I can shorten time for lecture. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to touch up this section. I wanted to push it in. Don't want it to show. Should be under. And this section, we can fill them up later. Let's pretend I'm going to just combine them. <coughs> save it again. D, now I'm going to save to D1. So I have D at D1. Just in case something wrong, I can go back there. So now I'm going to merge this down to the whole jacket. So merge down, merge down. There we go. And make sure data mesh is on. Read data mesh and touch up. So this is the starting point of working on the jacket. Okay. I should have taken more time to adjust that, but that's okay. There you go. Soften it. And if you want to fill that area up, just use clay build up. Let me read that mesh again. Oh, my clay buildup is too low. Saw, build it up, and soften it. And that section, if you want to close the hole, you can do pinch too. But make sure, oh, this one cannot pinch because it's pinched on the bottom too. So that's going to create a thin wall need to use a clay build up. Soften it, build it up, soften it. Build, 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 soft. Build, 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 soft. And read it a mash, and then you can soft it. Okay. Read it a mash. Here we go. And <laughs> a little awkward, but yeah. Okay. And what about if you do cough on the hand? You could do like this. Really simple. Let me mask quick. Okay. And then I'm going to invert. And I'm going to scale. Make sure you switch. Here we go. To there. And if you want, oop, you can. Change the orientation, and now I'm going to scale. Here we go. And undo. That's it. So the rest of, I mean, the rest of this, you just touch up. Like, um, it shouldn't have the, her breast shouldn't look like that. I, I forgot I should have flattened at the beginning, but you can slowly doing it. By move to move brush and that section have to come up I think right there okay. uh, let me move there 
이렇게. So that part need to come back up. I'm gonna use uh, move topology because these are actually come out. That's obviously too thick. Okay, I think I'm gonna stop because you got an idea already. You should be able to let me fill up. Oh, I do it too quick. Okay. Here we go. So, and the rest of the time, just touch up until I, until you get what you want. It's moving and things like that. Okay, let me save, and that's it for the lecture today. And the, I'm gonna A B C D E. <coughs> I have a bunch of them. Okay. So let me stop the record.